Hey guys, Tom Trey Holmes with Linux MCE. I uh, wanted to show you uh, primarily the uh, WebDT366 orbiter with my pad orbiter distribution. In the process you'll also see some of my other orbiters that I have uh, laying around here on the table. Now uh, without any further ado I'll go ahead and turn the camera off myself and onto my table here. I'm actually taking this uh, particular shot with the excellent, and I do mean excellent, uh, Flip Ultra. Uh, web slash point and shoot cam. Uh, you can get these things for like 129 at Amazon.com and they are worth every penny. So with that little endorsement there, uh, let's uh, let's get started. Okay, this is my table. Uh, on the left here, you see the uh, ever-present uh, Fire Chief. Uh, next to that, you see a Nokia N810. Uh, next to that, my cell phone, my uh, Nokia N70, and of course the uh, man of the hour here, the WebDT366 tablet. It is an 8.4 inch tablet running an AMD geode processor. It is actually an Alix reference design. Uh, this particular one they codenamed Emma, AMD co codenamed Emma. It runs on an AMD GX 533 MHz CPU. This is all business class design, uh, meaning that it is way over engineered. Uh, to give you an example, the casing here is actually uh, magnesium <laughs> With, that's been painted. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the physical characteristics of the tablet here. It's um, fairly lightweight. I can hold it pretty easily in my hand here. Uh, it has four buttons on the bottom here, which I'm configuring for pad orbiter use. The third one on the, the third one from the left is the network configuration button. Uh, but I also have uh, the home button also can bounce back to the previous screen. You've also got various little indicator lights for uh, you know hard drive battery and whatnot. And there is actually a built-in microphone, so uh, some interesting possibilities here as well. So we flip it around and we can actually see, sorry, I'm actually holding the camera here while I'm doing this. We can actually see the footprint of the device is actually quite slim. Uh, the only thing protruding out of the back is the uh, external battery, which can be removed. This is the external battery. There is an, ex there is an internal battery. All you have to do to remove the battery, it's pretty simple, just uh, clasp the two plastic pieces here and you have the final device. The battery actually does add quite a bit of weight. Without the battery this thing is barely a pound. Uh, with the battery it adds another pound or so. There are connectors here on the bottom for the cradle. Uh, on the side we've got one USB port. This is the only USB port on the system. Uh, you've also got the power button right here. Uh, in the back we have uh, protrusions for an antenna. which, odd, you know, I really don't need it in most situations. I don't think it, most people need it in most situations here, so we just kind of keep that locked. Uh, battery contacts. And there is also, excuse me here, this is rather interesting to do this while we're here. Uh, there is also an expansion slot for PCMCIA. Uh, just remove the two torque screws on the back. It's actually a compact flash slot, but you can put... Uh, memory cards or external network cards, whatever you want to put in here. I've actually got the system fully charged up, so I can just use this for now. Uh, with the uh, though, I can just use this now without the external battery on it, and I'll go ahead and power it on right now. As we see, it's powered on. It powers on the display. Another thing you'll notice here too is actually the display quality here is actually quite nice. It's nice and crisp, well color balanced, and it's viewable from a wide variety of angles. Now, this is my pad orbiter distribution booting up. I'm going to remove this in the final release, the grub splash screen. It's just going to be a straight countdown. Uh, it's a straight init RD, and I actually use uh, Splashy for my boot screens here. One of the things that I do want to do uh, while uh, before the release is try to tidy up the boot uh, process a bit and make it so that uh, the boot process is actually a lot faster. 
as we can see here, the traditional Linux MCE logo, we have a progress bar on the lower left-hand corner here. I tried to get this thing as uh, professional as I possibly could. Uh, currently, the boot process does take a moment to actually boot up. I do apologize for that, but um, like I said, I will... Um, I will take and improve the boot process quite a bit in the coming weeks. Um, and right now, essentially where it's stuck right now, it's currently uh, populating the UDEV device tree, and there are a lot of devices that are not present on this particular device on this particular tablet that are present on a normal PC. Things like a standard keyboard port, a keyboard controller, that sort of thing. So uh, UDEV kind of gets stuck there for a moment. But once it gets past the initial UDEV uh, UDEV procedure, the boot process actually um, goes ahead pretty swimmingly. And we see it here just booting through bit by bit. And oops, actually it looks like we need to uh, attach the battery again. I apologize. <laughs> Excuse me a minute while I uh, reattach the battery. Okay, so we reattach the external battery. And we go through the boot process again. Boot slash, BIOS and everything. It is worth noting that even with the, the diminished battery on this particular device, I get four hours of use out of this thing. Which means that with the rated power of maximum power inside the device uh, of two hours, you would get a total of six hours of battery time uh, with both batteries at full split, full capacity. I'm actually in the process of looking for additional batteries uh, and stuff right now as we speak. And once again, um, another thing too, you'll also notice here on the right hand side this interesting little button right here. That's not actually a button, that's actually a direction pad with up, down, left, and right movements. And what I will actually use that for, we already have support in the orbiter for it, I just need to take and patch a few things to prevent some conflicts. Uh, we have support so that you could use this, for example, use the up and the down for a uh, channel and use the left and the right for the volume. And that's what I'm proposing anyway, it can be changed in the web admin. So we're back here to our progress bar. Da -da 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 -da. Let's let this sucker boot. And I'm wondering if I can pause this thing. 